trying to get ahead of actual facts, not cool. So I would still say that there's probably he's a 95% signed. chance he's that signed. he's going to AEW. Just he just hasn't internet. actually signed. Yeah, the internet. I don't think he's signed. I just think now. he is doing it. Yeah. I would agree with her. I, I, I believe her that he's not actually signed, but I think he's going there. Yeah, but it was the same thing with fucking Mundo saying, oh, his wife saying, oh, he's not going to yep. WWE. What the fuck are you talking about? Then he showed up the next week. Yeah. So he's probably going there. He just probably isn't technically mm-hmm. signed. Just like Edge is cleared for wrestling. No, I'm not. What are you talking about? The, the internet works faster than people do. That's it's Is Edge a- wrestling now? Is that something I don't know about? No, but the speculation oh. is he will be wrestling at the Saudi show. Ah. Or, or at the will. very furthest out WrestleMania. But he has been cleared by WWE doctors. And why else would you be cleared? You know what I mean? That's sad. I could see a Saudi show. One more big payday for him. It's so sad, though. Oh, yeah, it is. It is. We don't want to see and, Edge. And Sheamus just came back. And Edge and Sheamus cut, like, two two episodes of Sheamus's Celtic Warrior workout, which is more than I've seen anybody else do with him. So I wonder if Sheamus and Edge won't have something going on. Hmm. Sad. Very sad. <laughs> sad. <laughs> I'd be happy isn't that sad? Wrestling. It is sad when you can't be done and be done. It sucks. Well, isn't it sad when he, he ended on top and then he's going to come back and have a shit match? Yeah, yeah, like Shawn Michaels. <laughs> yes, or like a million of them, Hulk Hogan and Ric Flair and uh, Undertaker and, like, e- even uh, Stone Cold didn't leave at its top. Yeah. Like, come on, you fuckers. Yep. I'm okay, I'm okay with them getting one last paycheck, but don't do it on a big stage. <laughs> That's selfish of me because they're not, you know, go out there and make 50 bucks. You bastard. Well, the best part is this next Saudi <laughs> show is scheduled for like a week or two before WrestleMania. And it's supposed to be a WrestleMania caliber show. For I know. Is, oh, and it's going to be. Yeah. But WrestleMania is going to fucking suck this year. <laughs> but guess what? I'm still not watching that fucking Saudi show. Cause I'm, I've, I'm on a track record of not How watching a single fucking do you one have of them. They're still going to agree to go. Are they all retired? You know what I mean? Why like not? after the last time, so many people said they won't go again. Why not call it WWE no longer retired and just <laughs> fucking bring out all the old guys who are still alive. Put the iron Sheik in there. He can't walk, but just drop him down. Like you did Owen Hart. You fuckers. <laughs> Some- uh. What are we at now? Um, Ring of Honor announced this afternoon that Kenta, who had worked for the company during his time for pro wrestling, no, would be appearing at Supercard of Honor event in April in Lakeland, Florida, over the WrestleMania 36 weekend. His first appearance in 11 years for the company. That's a Ow! huge get for Ring of Honor also. Yes. Huge. It shows that Ring of Honor and New Japan are still working together together a little bit a little bit a little bit and i'm pretty sure Skrull's gonna be the one to mend that bridge even more i would hope so i think it could only help honestly mm. wouldn't that be fun especially since uh hold ring of honor new japan and aew all together and NWA. Well, it really seems like aew and uh and new japan just will not work together and i i put it on the cons i really put it on the cons but because um, obviously New Japan's willing to work with most people, but I think mm. the, the, the I thing too, I can't, you can't say they won't work together because Mox and Jericho wrestle on their shows. You know what I mean? That's, but they don't have no, sense, they, they don't, don't have exclusive together. contracts. No, those two guys don't have exclusive contracts. They have contracts. There's a huge difference between exclusive contracts and contracts. You know. Yeah. I don't know that anybody in New- in uh, AEW has exclusive contracts. I have not heard that anybody does. No, I don't think so. I think the contract, the the, the variance is different. Like, a lot of people can't wrestle in uh, on television in America. Correct. Correct. But um, I don't I don't know of any exclusive. But, um, but actually working together, like co-promoting things, like yeah. I'll give you these guys, you give us these guys, or, or something like that. It seems like the cons aren't into that. I think it has something to do with, obviously, they know their 
they know their sports and they know their international markets. Mm-hmm. So I, it, it's probably a smart thing on AEW's part, and I don't understand it, but I know that obviously they're in the American football game, and they're also in the European football game. Yes. And so not only do they know sports, but they know international markets. So I think they, they know something more than you and I know. That's my guess. You know what I mean? Yeah. Something more than uh, probably WWE knows. Or something different than WWE knows, I should say. Yeah. And that's what I think is holding them up. And I don't think it's a bad thing. Because obviously, yes, they, they work with MLW and they work with... Uh, New Japan letting these people go there, so I I, I don't know what the deal is. Yeah, it's it's uh, pretty interesting, and we'll we'll see how it develops. I just I expect more to come from it in the next few months, actually. Well, somebody I expect less to come from, or at least I hope, like fucking hell, Elias has agreed to a multi-year contract extension with WWE. Yeah. The news was first announced by He's Ryan Satin. I don't care. On the latest episode of WWE Backstage, and the company later confirmed it on their website with a post as well. Elias confirmed the new deal, locks him in for three more years. Well, WWE is probably his highest value point anyway. So. Oh, yeah. That, yeah, it's I'm, the best I thing I for still him. walk with Elias. I just... Good for you. Yeah. I walk alone, as as the song says. All right. Batista. I don't think that's a Batista song. I don't yes, think he is. sings. No, but it's Batista's theme song. It is not. I walk alone. Yes, it is. Oh, shut up. Now you're just <laughs> saying things. <laughs> it's a Green Day song, you jackass. <laughs> it's not a fucking Batista song. It's Batista's theme song, motherfucker. Batista never used Green Day as his theme no, song. No, it's a different band. Well, get the fuck out of here. Batista theme no lyrics. Fuck you. Yeah, it's the song is called I Walk Alone by Saliva. I've walked for miles inside this pit of danger. I swallowed down a thousand years of anger. The weight of the world is resting on my shoulders. I walk alone. You do realize that's not the lyrics, though, right? No, I know you're talking Green Day. The lyrics says, I walk a lonely road, the only road I have ever known. Yeah. <laughs> Don't know where it goes, but it's only me. I walk alone. And the music video has three of them walking. Yeah. Alone. I but it's walk three of them. miles inside this pit of danger. Yeah. So... A He's place wrong. where no one follows me. What do we got now? I walk alone. Yeah. What do we got now? Uh, another re-signing to WWE is Kalisto, who can't learn a lesson, apparently. He's also he signed a multi-year things. contract extension and agrees to do good lucha things, Woo-hoo! according to Pro Wrestling Sheet. The site is reporting that the mass luchador has decided to re-sign with the promotion because he says he feels that he has a lot left to accomplish in the company. Crickets. Creakies. <laughs> um, I mean, he has a lot more. He can't have anything less. Let's be he, honest. There's about a lot that. more he can accomplish, but he won't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he can't accomplish anything less. Let's right. let's just be honest. Maybe he'll be the one to retire Rey Mysterio. Wouldn't that be fun? Uh, no. He deserves somebody better than that. <laughs> like Green Bay. Uh, <laughs> but pasty, six new recruits have reported to the WWE Performance Center. This class includes Mercedes Martinez, as we reported on last week, as well as an independent wrestler, an acrobat, a former NFL player, among many others. A clown and a prostitute. And uh, it's it's a bunch of clowns overseen by a bunch of monkeys, as they said. That is my favorite <laughs> clip from the news in the last week. That was the greatest fucking soundbite ever. So, what do you have to say about uh, the the missile attack on the air on the, on, the, on the plane in Iran? That airport is run by a bunch of monkeys 
over or run by a bunch of clowns overseen by a bunch of monkeys. That is so <laughs> fucking awesome. It made my day when I heard that reported on the news. Uh... Just to hear reporters say that. Anyways, um, WWE's bios of these new recruits reads as follows, Pasty. We'll just do a uh, every other we'll one. just do a point and shoot. Yes. So Emily Andulis of Powell, Tennessee, brings a diverse athletic background with her to Orlando. The 27-year-old is a blue belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu, and I believe that's better than a black belt. But I'm just making that up because I don't fucking know. And she trains in Taekwondo. She competed on Dwayne The Rock Johnson's Titan Games and was crowned the first female Titan. Ah. Anthony Francis is a six foot five, three hundred thirty pounder with five years of NFL experience under his belt. The former defensive tackle played for the Miami Dolphins, Seattle Seahawks, and Washington Redskins, and probably has zero Super Bowl rings. And that's racist. Sydney Bateman is a 27-year-old acrobat from St. Louis, Missouri. Bateman was a cast member for Cirque du Soleil, Lucia, where she specialized in hoop diving. She'll be diving through a lot of hoops to get a push in WWE, that's for sure. Yes. Zechariah Smith towers over the new recruits at seven feet tall and 310 pounds. Why is he lighter than the six foot five guy? <laughs> because he's a basketball player, not a football player. <laughs> it's helium. The Oklahoma native played <laughs> college basketball for Morgan State University before going pro internationally. He also played the longtime rivals of the Harlem Globetrotters, the Washington General. Sadly, he has zero wins to his name. <laughs> we don't know how it happened. The fucker used the ladder. Call it ref. He's using the ladder. They're literally stacked on each other's so- shoulders and not dribbling. <laughs> Kenny Marquise, a.k.a. independent wrestling standout Jake Atlas, brings his unique experience in gymnastics and cheerleading to the WWE Performance Center. This young 25-year-old California native broke out in promotions like Pro Wrestling Gorilla and appeared on an episode of Undercover Boss (laughs) featuring (laughs) Stephanie McMahon. What? Where Marquise explained to WWE's chief brand officer that his dream was to become the first openly gay WWE champion. When was WWE an undercover boss? I have was that no a thing? Idea. I, was that a thing? Did Stephanie just dress up as 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 her dad? Like, is that a thing? I don't know. I know Vince. No, Vince did an undercover boss thing, and they called him out like right away because he couldn't not be himself, even though he was in costume. I remember seeing that. I do not remember Stephanie McMahon doing it. Hi there, buddy. I'm here to park the cars at the stadium. Uh, what are you up to? Oh, I've been a valet for 25 years. Uh, what do you like? I like chocolate titties. Vince McMahon. Yeah, Vince that McMahon! You? <laughs> oh, man. Pasty, I think I broke a funny bone laughing at that shit. Oh. <laughs> oh, with that being said, uh, I think we should move into the injury report. I mean... Fucking or not. Yes, exactly. Oh, okay. <laughs> Precisely what I was thinking. Well done, Fat <laughs> Mac. <laughs> so, Pacey, Rich Swan suffered a major ankle injury. Wait, we didn't talk about Kenny Marquez, a.k.a. independent wrestling standout Jake Atlas. I just his fucking talked about him. Oh, Shut the fuck okay. up. I got to the cheerleading part. And I'm like, okay, it was done. He deserves a second mention, motherfucker. <laughs> he just finished it, you fucker. Rich Swan <laughs> suffered a major ankle sprain at an event in San Antonio on Friday and will not clear it in time for Saturday's Hard to Kill pay per view. Swan was set to team with Willie Mack, take on the North for the Impact Tag Team Championships. Instead, as mentioned in the results, the North defended the titles in a handicap match against just the Willie. Pacey. 
Let's get back on track, okay? Rachel, you are. Oh.